All right, so now we're going to turn the tables here. I'm giving you the graph, and I want you to tell me what the function is. Now, it all comes down to being able to identify the zeros from the picture. Okay? So when you look at this, you see this guy right here where he crosses at negative 4. So if he crosses at negative 4, think about what that means. That means you have a 0 of x equals negative 4. Okay? We understand that that in the picture corresponds to an x-intercept of negative 4 comma 0. And in terms of what that means in terms of the factor for the function, that means the factor is going to be x plus 4. Imagine you're kind of going backwards from that. I'm telling you what the solution is. Backtrack to the factor. So it's x plus 4. So that's going to be x plus 4. Now we see that we are hitting right here at negative 1. So the same kind of thing applies right here. If it's negative 1, that means it comes from the factor x plus 1. And then you see that we're hitting and bouncing off right here when x equals 3. So if it's x equals 3, flip the sign around, that's going to be x minus 3. But you're going to find out that if we were to type this into a graphing calculator, it's not going to, it's not going to work right because of this emphasize or, or notice right here that you have something that looks like a parabola see how it bounces off like this when it bounces off it goes back to what we talked about in the last video where we have a multiplicity and so when you bounce off like that that's going to come from you having a factor that is squared so that's x plus one squared also over here if you were to zoom in and just focus on this part of the graph you see that this guy is also bouncing away at that x-intercept. He's bouncing away just like a parabola. So it means he's also going to be squared. Now, just further analysis of our function, our proposed function. Let's see if it all makes sense. You end up with x, x squared, and x squared. So if you put all of that together in terms of the power function, that means that you're saying your function is equal to x to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus the rest of the pieces. I don't really care what the rest of the pieces are. The focus is that this is a polynomial of degree 5. Polynomial of degree 5, what does that mean? That means that you have five zeros. That means you have up to five x-intercepts. Well, in our picture, you see that we only have one, two, three x-intercepts, right? And in terms of the turning points, since it's degree five, the number of turning points will either be four or less than that by a multiple of two. So four, two, or zero turning points. So it means the most number of turning points that it could possibly have is four. And you'll see here in the picture, we have one, two, three, four turning points. So having four turning points tells us that at the very least, um, it has to be degree more than four. Okay. So if we had stopped right here and we didn't have the powers of two, and it was just x times x times x, that's x to the third. And something that's x to the third could only have at most two turning points. So it would not have fit with the picture that we have. Also another thing to consider is that this is, uh, we're saying x to the fifth, which means the end behavior the end behavior is supposed to be going up on the right and down on the left. And you see that's what's going on here. We're going up on the right and we're coming down here on the left. So it all fits in together with what we have. Okay? And it all comes back to this graph. Uh, let's try one more. And here we have this picture. Now notice in this picture that he's going down on both ends. So let's think about those basic shapes. We've talked about in the last one the cactus that was doing this. 
a negative in front would have had it going in opposite directions. Then we have an even, uh, an even degree polynomial function goes up on both ends, or with a negative is going to go down on both ends. And that's what this guy is. So at the very end, we need to make sure that we have something whose power function is an even degree, and it's going to have to have a negative lead coefficient. So let's take these zeros and backtrack them to our factors. So you see that we're crossing right here when x equals negative 3, so that's a factor of x plus 3. Notice he goes through, he doesn't bounce like in the last example. Any time you see a bounce happening on your x-axis, that's where you're going to have this guy right here, he's bouncing on the x-axis, which gives you a degree of 2. Now I'm not talking about bouncing here because that's not on the x-axis, clearly. Now here's another place where I'm crossing. I'm crossing when x equals 0. Now this is kind of tricky. When you cross at the origin, your factor is not going to be x minus 0. I mean, you could write that, but that's ridiculous because x minus 0 is just 0. I assume it's just x, what I'm thinking. So your factor there is just x. You're crossing right here when x equals 2. So that would correspond to the factor x minus 2. And you're crossing over here when uh, x equals 5. So that's the factor x minus 5. Now, if you were to look at what the power function is, if you were to expand all of this out, f of x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 factors of x plus some other stuff. I'm not going to multiply the whole thing out. But notice my end behavior. My end behavior is supposed to be going down on both ends. So that means this is supposed to be a negative right here, which means I'm supposed to have a negative leading off right there. Okay, And you'll see that if you were to type this into your graphing calculator, it's going to have the exact same picture as this. The shape may be a little bit different, and you might have to mess around with some of the settings, but it would definitely match up. Okay. So I hope that makes sense for you, uh, going from the picture to the graph. Now, sometimes students will do this. They just kind of go straight across and they say, okay, well, this is going to be, you know, they write x plus 3. They write just x and then x minus 2 and finally x minus 5. Uh, but the thing about that is that you don't want to leave single term factors like that in the middle and so it's best to just kind of write these guys in front like I have up here. Okay. Alright, so this is polynomial functions. Uh, the next section is about rational functions and that's when things get a little bit scary. See you then.